Hi, this is Bob Rubart from the Oracle Technology Network, and my guest today is David Delabasi. David is a software evangelist with Oracle. How you doing, David? Good, thank you. So, uh, what have you been spending your time on lately? I know, I know you're involved with uh, with Nashhorn. Tell me about Nashhorn. Well, so first, I'm part of the Java e group, so that's basically uh, where I spend most of, of my time. So, last year we have launched Java e seven, and uh, recently, we have been working on a project Avatar, and behind the scenes, it happens that Avatar relies heavily on Nashorn, the new JavaScript engine, which is part of Java 8 that we have just released. Okay, and now uh, uh, I know you've got some uh, uh, some speaking engagements coming up. You're involved in two different Developer Day events: one in South Africa, and one in India. Uh, what will you be presenting at those events? Yeah, so basically I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, two subjects. First one is Java E7 because that's, that's really where my focus is. So I will talk about all the new features we have in Java E7 such as WebSocket, uh, the Batch API and so on. And the second aspect of my presentation is really on Project Avatar which is a new cool project that we have launched uh, last year at Java 1. Okay, well tell me more about Project Avatar. So. Uh, Project Avatar. First, to understand Project Avatar, uh, we have to understand uh, where it comes from. Um, so if we look uh, on the market, uh, a few years ago, I think it was in 2009, um, a new framework, software framework has been launched. It's called Node.js. The idea of Node.js, it's basically a software platform that allows you to write uh, scalable internet applications. So applications that have to deal with a lot of data, not necessarily uh, doing a lot of uh, computer, computer uh, tasks. So if your application basically has to do a lot of CPU bound tasks, it's not really the best fit for Node.js. But if you have an application that basically takes data in and spit data out, that's a perfect fit. So if you look behind the scenes, uh, how it works in Node.js, Node.js, uh, they are using um, the Chrome V8 engine, which is the JavaScript runtime of the Chrome browser. So they have extracted that out of the browser itself, and it's basically the runtime of Node.js. So if you are writing Node applications, it basically means that you have to write uh, application using JavaScript. And the big idea of uh, the Node programming model is that um, the, the, the basic principle is that uh, doing multi-trading is difficult. And it's true that doing multi-trading application can be challenging. So the way they solve that in, uh, in Node is you don't do multi-trading. They have what, they, what, what is called a single event loop. And everything happens in, in that uh, single event loop. And as soon as you need to do something which is expensive, for example, uh, getting some information from the network or querying the database, those kind of things that can take milliseconds, so they are expensing, expensive in terms of performance. The way it works is that you do this, op this operation but, but in an asynchronous way. So you do that, you then register a callback and that callback will be invoked whenever, for example, you have the result from the network. So that's basically how Node works. So Node, node uh, it's even uh, an event-based model using a non-blocking asynchronous uh, I.O. Um, so what we are doing in Avatar, we, are, we, we, have, we have a project which, which is called Avatar.js. The idea with, uh, of Avatar.js is basically, it's, it's Node, but on top of the GVM. So it's the Node programming model, so you develop your application using the JavaScript language. Behind the scenes, we are using Nashorn, so it works on top of Java 8. And the nice thing about that is that we can do more than what you do on the Node side. So technically, it's exactly the same programming models, but we can leverage uh, capabilities that are offered by the GVM. For example, from our Node applications running on top of Avatar.js, we can invoke Java code, doing those kind of things. So that's one thing. So Avatar.js, uh, based on Nashorn, then we have taken that model and pushed it a bit uh, further. So what we are doing in Project Avatar is basically we take Avatar.js and we are leveraging the Java E uh, capabilities. So it's basically Avatar.js running within a Java E containers. So 
So that means that not only we can get benefit from the GVM, but we can also get benefit from the application server itself. So for example, what we have done in the project avatar, we have um, an ORM, so an object relational uh, model framework, which is called model store. So it's, uh, it's basically a JavaScript API, as you have uh, you have a lot of those uh, ORM framework on the Node.js uh, ecosystem, so it's basically the same, except that behind the scenes, we are using GPA, Java Persistence API. So you have to understand that it's not, um, I would say, uh, a JavaScript API just based on top of GPA. Uh, we are doing that because we think that we can get a lot of benefit by using GPA. For example, let's say that, uh, I don't know, if you want, for example, to do uh, caching, that's something we are doing in GPA um, easily. So it's this idea where we we expose some of the capabilities of the of Java E or of the application server, expose them in uh, Avatar.js. So we are exposing them to the node programming model, but we can get benefit of all the features and framework provided by Java E. Another example is that we have the ability to use GMS from uh, the node programming model in Project Avatar, those kind of things. So that's, that's really the, the basic idea of Project Avatar. So what we are also doing in Project Avatar is that if you look at, on Node.js, if you look at you uh, what you need to do to scale an application, so you basically have to fork different node process. Um, on the, on the virtual machines, we can easily scale that. So what we are doing, we still have this uh, single event loop, but instead of having one single, single event loop, we have many, sing many uh, event loops, sorry. But it's still, uh, your, your code run exactly the same way. But so what we are basically uh, doing in that case is that we are leveraging Java E and the virtual machine to scale uh, the, the code more easily. And since you have many uh, event loop, what we are providing by default is a front-end load balancer within the same uh, Java virtual machine. In Node, you would have to not only uh, start different node process, but you would also have to set up a cluster front-end load balancer to load balance the request between the different node instances, for example. So that's basically the idea uh, of Project Avatar. Now, uh, I know information on Project Avatar is available on java.net. Uh, that's an open source project, correct? That's correct. So we have launched Project Avatar last year at Java 1. It's open source. So the code, the code is out there. Um, right now, it works on top of Glassfish 4. Uh, but the idea is to expand that to other containers. And WebLogic is obviously a good candidate. So uh, WebLogic, that's something we are working on. Uh, there is no roadmap yet, but uh, obviously uh, that's important for, for us. But anyway, that's, um, everything is open source, so we really encourage the community to check it out. All right, great. Well, I will uh, include uh, information on the link to how to get to that if you look down in the comments there below this video. Well, David, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for taking the time, uh, and thanks for the explanation on Project Avatar, and uh, good luck with your Developer Day presentations. Thanks a lot.